Hey guys, this is Mr. Bennett, and this is uh, kind of a video follow-up to Notes 12.3 that we did in class yesterday. So, um, for Notes 12.3, what we're really looking at is we're looking at phase diagrams. Phase diagrams are a way to depict how uh, essentially the phase of a substance changes between solid, liquid, and gas based on not just temperature. Temperature is kind of one aspect, right? So, you know, we know we're familiar with temperature changing the phases, but also based on pressure. So pressure is also a variable that can determine whether something is solid, liquid, or gas. Um, and just as a review, remember that uh, the way we understand temperature is uh, really uh, related to kinetic energy. So if we raise the temperature, we think of something getting hot, but in reality, uh, what's happening is the kinetic energy of the object is increasing. And when we transition from one phase to another using temperature alone, uh, what we're doing is going from a solid to a liquid is we are uh, decreasing the number of molecular attractions. And then when you go from a liquid to a gas, you're also decreasing molecular attractions. So uh, as far as the new vocabulary goes, sublimation is when you go straight from a solid to a gas. You skip the liquid phase. Uh, the triple point is a specific... Specific? Whoops. Uh, temperature and pressure where all three phases are present. So in other words, for that substance, at this specific temperature and pressure, you have all three phases at the same time. And I'll have a cleaned up version of these notes available online. Uh, this is just the video. A little messy. Um, but the main thing I want to go over right now, because I feel like uh, this is where the, the challenge is, is understanding the phase diagram itself. So this diagram over here on the right-hand side. Okay. Uh, so the idea is you have temperature on your x-axis, and you have pressure on your y-axis. Okay. And uh, what this is saying is that we have a substance, and as we change the temperature or the pressure, or maybe both, we can change the phase of the substance. So there's, the first thing we need to do is understand there are three points that are really important on the graph. The first point is right here, and we call this the triple point. So at that specific temperature and pressure value, this particular substance would actually exist as all three phases. Now if we look at point A up here, point A is where we're transitioning from a solid to a liquid. So we would say if we're going to the right, if we're going this way, we would say that the substance is in the process of melting. If we were going to the left, we would say the process or the substance was in the process of freezing. Okay? But that specific point A coincides with, and it's not written here, so we'll add it, coincides with a pressure of one atmosphere. Or another way of saying it, it is sea level. Okay? The reason why this point is important is that this point here is what we call the normal whoops there we go uh, sorry handwriting is bad on this particular program but it is the normal freezing point or melting point depending on again which way you're going and the reason why it's normal is because it's at one atmosphere or sea level Okay. The same thing could be said uh, for point B over here, except that in point B, we're going from a liquid to a gas. So different process, So we, but because it's at sea level, we call this the normal boiling point. Okay. So really, when it comes down to it, there are lots of boiling points for a substance. Right? Anywhere on this line between liquid and gas, these are all boiling points. But the point is that point B is the normal boiling point because that's the boiling temperature at sea level. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about is how do we draw a phase diagram? And a lot of people have trouble kind of figuring out, okay, how do I set this up? It's confusing. But really, when it comes down to drawing a phase diagram, you're really just plotting three points. So our three points are right over here. This is the data they give us. We need to plot these three points. So the first thing is you need to look at the values. What values do we have? Well, in each one, they give us a temperature, right? And the units of temperature in this particular set of data are Celsius. So we would write temperature, and then the units go in parentheses. So Celsius, degrees Celsius, right? And then on the 
y-axis, they are, uh, are the, sorry, the other set of data that they're giving us, the other point that they're giving us, which is going to go on the y-axis, uh, would be the pressure. And so notice that all three pressure values are in atmospheres. So we would write that pressure is the y-axis, and it's in atmospheres. Now, this could be different. It doesn't have to be atmospheres. Remember, there are other types of pressure variables. So this could also be kilopascals. It could be, uh, let's see, uh, PSI. And I wrote kilopascals wrong. It would actually be K, capital P, little a. There we go. Kilopascals, PSI, TOR, um, T-O-R, T-O-R-R, or uh, millimeters of mercury. Um, those are all viable, you know, good pressure units. So any of those could be there. So you want to make sure what units are they using for pressure. Make sure we put them over here. Okay. The next thing that I always put on my line or my on my phase diagram is sea level because that's going to be important when we try to plot the normal freezing and the normal boiling point. So in this case, I kind of look at my pressures. I have a pressure of 0.25 and I have a pressure of one atmosphere. Okay. These are actually both pressures of one atmosphere. So what I do is I go over to my graph and I say, okay, where is sea level? Well, Point-wise, I just need to be able to plot one atmosphere and 0.25 atmosphere. So I'm just going to point, I'm going to plot sea level here. And it turns out sea level is one atmosphere, right? It's at, that's sea level, okay? So I plot my sea level first. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out my normal freezing and my normal boiling points because I know that they both are going to happen at sea level. So I might as well like plot those now that I've plotted my sea level points. Okay, So I look at their temperatures. I've got 200 Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius. I'm going to plot the big one first. So I'm going to say that I'm going to range from 200 Celsius over here, and I'll put 0 Celsius over here. Okay, So at 200 Celsius and 1 atmosphere, that's my normal boiling point. So I follow this up, and I plot my normal boiling point. It's right there. Okay, 1 atmosphere pressure and 200 degrees Celsius. Then I go to my normal freezing point. That happens at 25 degrees Celsius. Well, I'm kind of picky. I want this to be to scale. So I look at my temperature range down here, right? It's 0 to 200. So I go about halfway. That's going to be 100. I split from 0 to 100 and half. That's going to be 50. And I go from 0 to 50. I'm going to split that to 25. Just to give me, since I don't have a, a real nice graph here, just give me some scale, OK? And we know the normal freezing point is going to happen here at 25 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow 25 degrees all the way up until it hits sea level because it's the normal freezing point, which happens at sea level or one atmosphere. So there's my normal freezing point. The last point I need to put in is my triple point. That happens at 75 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to add 75 down here, halfway between 50 and 100. And that happens at 0.25 atmospheres. So we had one atmosphere up here. I'm going to cut it in half. So this will be... 0.5, and then I'll cut that in half, and that will be our 0.25 atmospheres. Okay, so if I go across to 75, this will be my triple point right here. And then the last step is simply just drawing the graph itself. So I'll draw it here. Let's uh, let's make it kind of purple. So I'm going to connect my dots here. Okay, connect my dots here, and I'll do a little curve down here. Now, is this a perfect phase diagram for this particular substance? No. To get the true line, I would have to do an experiment, and I'd have to gather data in the lab to fill out the plots, to figure out the exact curves. But it gives us an estimate, gives us an idea as to where the, the phase changes are. Okay, And I kind of lied. There's actually one more step. You need to label the phase areas. Um, so in other words, I need to label the sections of this graph solid liquid gas. The way I do that is I actually look again at the temperature range. I know that at its coldest, we'll have a solid. That's going to turn into a liquid, and then it's going to turn into a gas. So what I do is I think, okay, this section over here, this is going to be solid. The top middle is going to be liquid, and then eventually it's going to heat up, and it's going to turn into a gas. So that's how you draw a phase diagram.